Well, the vehicle behind me is the Apollo 11 Command Module. Apollo 11 Command Module is the one that took Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, Michael Collins to the moon. Neil Armstrong sat with his head up against that headrest right up there. Michael Collins, Command Module Pilot, would sit in the center seat. Buzz Aldrin, Buzz Aldrin would sit right back over here in that right hand seat. Right? So you have Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. You might say, well done, nice big picture window for them to look out of. No, no, that's an escape hatch, right? There's the window right there. And there's, those of you in the back, and you see there's another window up here. And then right here in the middle, there's about an eight inch window that sits right here around porthole. But look where his rear end sits. Look where his back sits, sits with his head against that headrest. So that means he sits there, kind of like that, right? So if this hatch is here and that's there, the only way you're gonna look out the window and see what's outside is you're gonna have to go, okay, there it is, okay, that's good, like that. Now, remember where we are, gang? We're in the vacuum of space, right? And in the vacuum of space, there's no air. This is a space vehicle, not an aircraft, right? And the space vehicle means there's no air. If there's no air molecules around the, air, the vehicle, what that means is, you know how the sun heats the atmosphere? The atmosphere is 78 degrees out there because the sun is heating it even though we can't see it. That's convective or conductive, right? The only way, if there's no air, you can't convect or conduct. The only way you can get it is by radiation. So that means we get radiant heat. And radiant heat means when the sun is there, it shines here, this part of the vehicle gets hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. And this side of the vehicle over here, gets colder and colder and colder and colder. What happens to man-made stuff when you make it really hot on one side, really cold on the other, and then put torsional forces on it? It catastrophically disintegrates. It falls apart, right? It breaks apart. So what we have to do is to make this vehicle keep even heating. So to put even heating on the vehicle, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins, when they're heading for the moon, with no air, just sun on them, they have to put it into what they call barbecue mode. Which is a nice slow rotisserie roll all the way to the moon. Keep even heating it. So if you're gonna look out that window, right? You don't just what you don't just look out there and see the moon get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? The only way you can see the moon get bigger and bigger is you're heading a quarter of a million miles away, is you gotta look out the window and watch the moon go by. And then you watch the moon go by. And then you watch the moon go by. And that's the way you're flying along. When you get up there, you have a 40 nautical mile window across a quarter of a million miles of space. And you have to hit that window perfectly. Because if you miss it, the energy that you have used to get there is not captured by the gravitational pull of the moon. What that means is you will bend the trajectory, not capture it. And it's a long one-way trip past the Jupiter. Because you can't turn around, fire every rocket you've got, and come back to Earth because you need the gravitational pull of the moon to slingshot you back to Earth. So if you miss it, you can turn around and try to fire everything. You'll just slow down, but you'll still keep going out. One-way trip past the Jupiter. So you better not miss that window. That's what. Uh, Michael Collins is responsible for. He has to hit that 40, 40 nautical mile window across a quarter of a million miles of space. That's the same as if I have a quarter and I'm in Chicago and we compensate for the curvature of the earth and you're in Washington and I'm in Chicago, if you can take a 22 caliber bullet and shoot that quarter out of my hand, that's about the same curvature without the curvature is what we're talking about. That's what this computer and what he's responsible for doing. The computer takes him offline, he has to change he has to make one correction going and one correction coming back because it had begun to translate, it began to degenerate. So that's what is going on. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin climb out of the vehicle. They go to the nose and remember what's connected? Do you remember what the name of this vehicle is? This one right here? One, it's named, it, it, is the, it is the first vehicle that we named it. And we gave its name to another great first, which is the first space shuttle we ever had, the Columbia. This is the original Columbia. We lost the original Columbia coming back in on the space shuttle, but this is the one that one was named for. This vehicle is one Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. Attached to it is the lunar excursion module. Remember the four-legged, gangly-looking thing? 
right? And it's, it's connected, the whole thing goes to the moon, and then Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin go in here, and they start heading for the moon, and the world turns its attention to Neil and Buzz in the Lunar Excursion Module. Remember its name? The Lunar Excursion Module, the LEM, the what was it called? The Eagle. Tranquility Base here, the Eagle has landed. Roger, Tranquility, we copy on the ground. Remember all that stuff? Neil, the world turns its attention to Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin and the Eagle, and we all forgot about a guy by the name of Michael Collins, the command module pilot, who sat alone in this vehicle, orbiting the moon every two hours. And as he orbited the moon every two hours, for one hour out of every two, he's on the back side of the moon. On the back side of the moon, he's on the far side of the moon, the side you and I never see, right? Because the moon always keeps one face to us at all times. So when he's on the back side of the moon, there are no airwaves to transmit radio. So the only way you can send any transmission is direct line of sight. So you have to be on the front side of the moon. So he can't talk to anybody on the front side of the moon when he's on the back side of the moon. Who's on the front side of the moon? Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, right, at the Sea of Tranquility. Who else is on the front side of the moon? All of us. Earth is on the front side. Of the moon. So for one hour out of every two, Michael Collins is sitting in this vehicle, the Columbia, completely and totally cut off from humanity, a quarter of a million miles away from Earth, in a vehicle, orbiting the moon in the vehicle, built for the government by the lowest bidder. <laughs> Did it bother you, Michael? And he said, no, 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 I had a lot of stuff to do. I had a lot of shots to take, I had a lot of sextant shots to do and things like that. You want to see the human side of that? Go get Michael Collins' book called Carrying the Fire. That's a book he wrote after this, Carrying the Fire. And in there, there's a little vignette that will tell you the human side of that story. And I'll, 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 I'll do the reading for you and tell you that story. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were there. So, but I want, before I do that, I want you to do this. Put yourself in that darkened little office there. Okay, Michael. You got 53 minutes to LOS, Michael. Lost the signal. 51 minutes to LOS, Michael. Lost the signal. You're going to go to the backside, you're going to lose signal. By the way, Michael, why don't you take the 36 chronograph, why don't you take that number one inverter, put it from the A phase to the B phase, I want to take that number two oxygen tank, I want you to stir that cryogenically, you know, electrically. By the way, Michael, stirring that tank, two missions later from now in Apollo 13, when we stir that tank, that's going to blow the spacecraft up. But don't worry about that. You do that on the back of the... Okay, 13 minutes to LOS, Michael. 13 minutes to loss of signal. Okay, 10 minutes. Okay, 3 minutes to LOS, Michael. And then you're... Th okay, 30 seconds to loss of signal. Get them back in that shadow. Now we're starting to see the, the Earth go behind the moon. Okay, 10. Michael, we'll talk to you on the other side. 3, 2, 1. We'll be talking to you. Okay, here we are. Okay, let's see. Gonna take this 36 chromograph. Gonna take that number one inverter, put it to the B phase. Gonna take that, uh, you know, take that, uh, 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 stir that number two tank electrically. Okay, we did that. That's good. Okay, 46 minutes to AOS. Acquisition is signal. 46 minutes to go. Okay, I heard that little crack and pop you're making. You're doing that's good. Okay, 13. Okay, 12 minutes to AOS. Acquisition. Three minutes to AOS coming out of behind the shadow of the moon. Seeing Earth rise. Earth rise is coming up. And as you get there, three, we're getting to ten seconds, then seven seconds, then three, then two, one. Acquisition of signal. AOS, get control of your voice now. Houston, this is Columbia. Houston, this is Columbia. Houston, this is Columbia. <clears throat> Hello, Columbia, Houston. Hi, guys. How you doing? 